Hey everyone, it's another Sunday. Time to pretend once again that I have a plan. So to start off, I've decided to change the way I'm going to be doing my panel installation in the coach. I'm going to be making the panels right in place instead of making an external wooden buck. And the reason I'm going to be doing this is because I've decided that all the walls aren't quite the same shape. Some of the panels have little deviations and deflections in them. And by making them into place, they will fit the actual area much better than if I had made a generic uh, buck outside and then brought the panels in cutting them into size. I'm going to begin by cutting quarter inch strips of plywood that are the width of these supports here, gluing the strips together and screwing them into place. my strips it's just a matter of cutting them to length gluing them together and screwing them into place okay now the wood slats are done we can go ahead and move on with our foam but there's a couple things I wanted to show you the first off being the top ribs I had to do were just a little bit different. Uh, I made them in three pieces. That's because this bend here is, is a pretty tight radius for bending wood. So I cut these to seven and a half inch pieces and pie cut them. So the wood was a lot easier to bend. And uh, they screwed in and now they can form the shape real nice without a lot of pressure on the wood trying to open themselves back up. Here's a better picture. You can see the little pie cuts I put in here to make the the radius here. Uh, the Gorilla Glue once again is used to bond the wood together and being it's expanding it fills all those pie cuts with the expanded glue making it even stronger. Now I already did a little bit of foam work as you can see. This is two layers of three quarter inch and one layer of half inch foam. They are glued together and glued to the wall. The glue I'm using on the outside wall is actually just regular Gorilla Glue. And the reason I chose that is because it's an expanding glue. Uh, I put a good coating all around the edges and in the center and glued the pieces of styrofoam together with Glidden Gripper Primer. Um, it works really well with the foam and I, when I've tested it. You can't separate it once it's together. Once I have it all together, I put a piece of wood across the center here and push this into place and let it dry. And the outcome, is a very solid bond. Even banging on the outside of the coach, you can hear the difference. They're made about a half inch shorter than the overall dimensions, so I have a quarter inch gap all the way around. And once this is all glued and dry, I come back with spray foam and fill all the gaps and any voids that are behind the metal or behind the wood in the, with the aluminum U-channels. And it seals it in there real nice. The foam has a nice solid uniform contact with the outside of the coach and I have a feeling it's not going anywhere. These are all the wood straps that run across the top of the coach and all down the walls. Some of them have some funky shapes on them because the window dressings, when I do them, I'm trying to keep them as tight to the outside surface as I can. That's why some of these have these weird cutouts. We'll get into that in a future date, though. Now, this coach doesn't have a lot of wiring running through the walls. I'm doing that on purpose. 
everything is going to be on the inside where it's easily accessible to work on with a couple exceptions this is the factory harness running from the front to the back of the coach for the rear tail lights and i didn't want to take this out of the wall maybe i'm just being lazy but i left it in there the way i'm approaching this is i'm running a half inch piece of foam board behind it and then i'm running the two three quarter pieces that are just shy of this piece and this will get injected with spray foam this foam here was just left over in a can i didn't want it to go to waste once it hardened up in the straw these ones over here have just that it's a quarter a half inch piece against the outside wall and two and the, uh, the second layer is a three quarter inch strips that have the wires running through it these ones actually have the wires for the uh the senders for the gas tanks and the fuel pump that run through here so there's actually two wires running right here i am also marking the wood with w's as to know not to drill in those areas so i know there's wires behind here but it left two little grooves inside of the foam and then this last piece laminated over top of all of it sealing it in place and like it's once again solid as a rock i'm really happy with the way this is turning out now in the end this isn't the final layer of foam that i'm going to be using there's actually going to be another three quarter inch layer going on top of this that's going to be my finished inside wall whatever material i decide to go with is probably going to be going right onto that foam it'll be easily removed lightweight and insulating at the same time there'll be some wood trim around the outside to actually hold it in place but that's the final step this will have a total of two and three quarter inches of insulation around the entire inside of the coach the only exception to that is going to be above the bed in the back back here is where my ducted mini split is going this is getting a mini split system but not one of the ones you see hanging on a wall it actually is going to be hidden in the ceiling it comes down about nine inches. This is the only area here where it's only gonna have the two inches of insulation. Now, there's gonna be a surround cover around the, the unit. That we'll see, that might be insulation as well. But I'll get to that when I get to that point. Now, I've got my foam cut. I've cleaned up any excess little bits of foam that might be stuck to the wall. And then wiped the area down with acetone. So now we can start assembling the foam parts. The first panel I'm going to put up is going to be my half inch panel. The next panel is going to go here and give us this, the gap we need for our piece of wire here. You can use a screw to temporarily hold them together. Once we have our pieces in place, we can go ahead and screw it all together. Make sure they're exactly where we want them. Now I don't know why, but at the very second, my camera decided to shut off. Whether it was a good thing or not, I don't know. Now, once the insulation is done, the plan is to work mostly on the outside of the coach, fixing seams, fixing holes, making it cosmetically nicer. The only other project I really have planned right away for the interior is going to be making the new bed frame so I can start planning the rest of my interior, as well as starting to work on the new dashboard. That's something I kind of want to get done. I figured if it's insulated in here, I have a bed, I can drive it. I could probably use it. Why not?
Now I'm sure you can tell that the installation install is going to be a several week project because I can only do so many segments at a time. In the meantime, I'm going to have another project to be working on for next week's video and that's going to be making a mold for the cap for the inside of the cab of the, the GMC. This is going to have a couple modifications to it including a console above my head that holds the air ride controls instead of the controls being in the dashboard. Also I'm going to be mounting the two fuel gauges for the tanks up by that area as well. So if you don't want to miss next week's episode of making the cap for the coach, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next weekend. Thanks for watching again, guys. Take care.